Okay, this is six scale. Oops, six scale to an eighth. All right, please add yourself to that as an attendee. All right. All right, performance job results. Uh, Alay, I merged your PR. So we're good to go here. Um, you know, I'm sorry, yeah. I need to drop and join right back. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah, no problem. Hey, Bacalay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Can you hear right. me okay now? Yeah, you're just fine. Awesome. Yeah, sorry, I missed uh, some of what you were saying earlier. So all, all the same is the uh, the the pull request you created was merged. So I don't know if, it, if there's anything we want to review on this or. Um, or anything uh, we need to yeah. look at other than so I was doing some work. So yeah, I, let me give an update or on what are the things um, that are needed. So first um, I have a comparison of um, of previous data with uh, newly added job results. Um, if you want, if you can allow me to share my screen, I can yeah. um, go ahead and start talking over. Okay. Let me see. Do you have, you don't have sh screen sharing? Oh, you do. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. So this is, so there are three charts. Um, currently a uh, periodic end-to-end VMI, -end, uh, periodic end-to-end -end VM, and density 100 uh, PM. When we last reviewed this chart, the periodic end-to-end -end VMI was going down because of a, a networking uh, pull request that we had identified. Um, now we regressed a little bit in terms of getting the historic uh, data. The plots right now are only for uh, weekly data. And um, I have an issue open for this regression. We will we'll soon fix this. But what I wanted to do today is take this historic comparison that is on the right and compare uh, the recent weekly data um, and see how we are doing. Um, Ryan, can you still hear me? Yep, I got you. Okay. Just checking. Okay, um, so first thing, let's look at the uh, P50 for VMI. Um, as, as noted earlier, we saw that um, the time is actually going down. Uh, P50, and I think we, so if we look at this range, right, we were, um, we were below 20, um, close to uh, 15 range. Here we are seeing that some dots are, are coming up uh, in, uh, that are above 20, but um, all in all, we are 
we are doing okay in, in terms of average. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, so this will be more recent. So these had nice groupings of, of 15, 16, I think. It, it seems to me that we are regressing a little bit um, to 22 here. So because of that, it will be good to also take a look at P95. Let me do the same thing here. So if we look at P95, it was consistently close to 30. We are seeing that for recent weeks that we have been um, actually lower than then um, 30, we've been hitting 23-ish. Um, Here we are 26. So I, I think there is a slight um, regress in performance. I did not get a chance to you know, track down the exact PR uh, of why this was happening, uh, but it's not too alarming. Okay, maybe let's see. Um, so this is uh, a week to week. Maybe let's see if the trend continues. Let's see if, um, maybe yeah. let's see how, kind of as we slowly zoom this out, we keep an eye on this date and we'll see if it's, uh, yes. if this is pointing to a pattern. Yeah, we need to keep an eye on, on this. Um, okay. Next, okay, this second. So what was the date? It was like May, um, so June, first week of May versus oh, the first week of June. Yeah. June 4th is when we are seeing that uh, upper dot in B50 here. Okay. All right, there we go. Noted it. Okay, so then um, I actually did not find anything in these charts that are below. Hmm? Oh, I think you said hello. <laughs> I thought oh, you no, lost oh, connection I, again. No, I, I was saying that I couldn't find anything um, on anything that stood out on the charts uh, below this. This was the only observed uh, anomaly. Uh, I'm just scrolling through to see if anything else pops out. Oh. Let me take a look at patch VMI. So the patch VMI, we had been seeing the averages tend down to 48. I think we are back to 65. Yeah, so if you look our earlier averages, if you look at the orange one, it was close to in, in between 70 and 80. Briefly, we went down to 50, 47, 48, and then we are going, we're climbing back again to 65. So this is an, another thing we can keep an eye on. I'm not sure if this is like anomaly in data collection or there is something that actually improved here. Yeah, everything else is consistent. Okay, so with this, um, we can go to the next chart. Actually, before this one, let me take a look at the performance. So this is the same uh, performance, sick performance job, but this is for VM. Uh, EM again. 
So here, we the latest that we left at was 15. We are at 18. So same performance regression that we saw for VMI, uh, around three to four seconds, excuse me, um, is observed here as well. So if you look, um, there were there were no dots closer, like beyond 20 here. We are seeing some dots consistently go above 20. Maybe that's bringing the, the averages up a little bit. Um, so I, I think both for VM as well as VMI, um, we regressed a little bit. Yeah. and. That was the P95, P50, looking at P95 again. Yeah, same story here. So we are consistently grouping below 30. And we had these dots that were in 20s. The, the 20s dots have, have gone away. So average P95 is consistently clocking closer to 30. So this is um, yeah, similar regression. Patch VMI, mm -hmm. same story here. We have improved a little bit in averages. So this is very interesting. So if you look, we left the patch VMI count at 160. And here the patch VMIs are considerably below 100. This Seems, seems odd. Am I looking at the right comparison? Yeah. This is something we will have, we'll have to take. Why is this anomaly? This looks odd. Okay, so with that, we can move on to the uh, density comparison. So this one was um, was different to the performance job. Here, we actually saw the numbers climb when we last reviewed the graphs. Uh, so we just need to make sure that um, comparing this is, is actually uh, comparable. Um, so we were seeing close to uh, 50, the, the average um, in the last week when we tracked this. Now, if you look, um, we have gone down in those averages. We are consistently hitting in mid 40s and the, the average for this week is actually 43. So this is an, oh, actually, I'm looking at the wrong metric. Um, let's see. So, Consistently hitting high 50s in P95 and here we are also seeing a similar thing.
yeah so the trend uh, continues um we did not improve um, so the last time we talked about this um we we wanted to keep an eye out on this and see if we improve here but it looks like we are continuing on the same path me yeah so if you look earlier we were hitting uh, almost like the average was 50 and then now we are clocking slightly above 50 Yeah, so I don't quite understand the like the left side. We get, so it seems like we've got so little data, and then why? Like we've got a lot more on the right. This one. So on, on the left side in the in the June time frame. Oh, we're only looking at a week. That's why. No, yeah, this are, is well. Two um, weeks to one so week. We um, this is me. so when we transition from my uh, for my benchmark collecting repository to this ci benchmark repository there was a first instance that collect, collected all history and then from there on i have been looking at weekly charts so there is a feature that is needed in the graph plotting tool that can accept a, a date from which we need to plot the graph so that is missing and and that's why this graph only plots the data that is in the repository which is for one week so i there is no missing data but just this plotting feature needs to be enhanced in our follow up and i have an issue for it in in the document um next in the agenda so we we will get this fixed right Yeah. So once we have this fixed, um, this will be a continuous graph. So you'll be able to, instead of comparing left and right, you'll be able to see it in in a straight timeline on a single chart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I had. I'm going to stop share, and we can go back to the agenda. Okay. All right. I'll take that. Thanks, Lai. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Then, then um, so we've had, so we'll have some changes that I'll come in. So, what about us? Uh, so let's review some of the stuff for V one. So we've got um, these two. <clears throat> I think we just uh, need to for this one. Uh, maybe we just ping Dan. I can just ping Daniel, or maybe start a thread with Daniel, and let's. See if we can take this over from him, and then uh, I mean, this seems to be done. I mean, just we need the changes that incorporates the the PR you did, and then I think we're good. I'd like to get this. Uh, like, if Daniel's busy, yeah. I don't want to block on this. Let's just start a thread, and let's let him know. We'll take this the rest of the way. And I think I have approval for this. I should now. Um, for this, I think your approval might not work. Yeah. Job, need help oh, okay. Approval. Okay. So maybe what we can do is like. Let's just sync with him and just say, "Hey, we'll take this," and you can put push the commit, uh, push the commit that corrects this, and then maybe he can approve it, and we can move on, or maybe Luvo can do it. Yeah, I think that would be great because I have to spend at least thirty minutes um, before every meeting to get this run manually and set up everything. So it would be good to you know get unblocked on this and get that time back so we can look at other things. Okay. All right. Now, um, okay. For this stuff, let's see. What do we have left? We had a bunch of stuff merge, and then yeah, that's so. The last block you see is some more scoping I did for for V one. So this is the the issue I was talking about earlier, where when we switched branches, sorry, repositories. um there was an, an there is an enhancement needed in the weekly graph subcommand um 
and that will get us to a point where we don't have to compare charts like this the way we did today we, it, we will get a, a single graph uh, from a date so let's say if we decide that the past two releases was on um, january 1st 2022 and we want data from there so the graph tool should accept a date from which it will plot uh, all the data, um, and this issue is for that. I will. This is what I will work on, um, and we need to get this first. Okay. And um, if you go back to the main tracking issue, okay. so once we get that, then I think we need an ability to render. Uh, this HTML that is created by the first issue. And then we need an ability to screenshot that HTML and save it in the repository. Uh, once we have it in the repository, we can put it in the badge, like uh, how um, the the CI, CI has it, CI repository. Okay. okay, cool, all right. So I guess if we get, so if we get the, if we get this one, we get, so this one gives us the data pretty, and then, and then after that, um, just a few tweaks, it sounds like, and we need to, this one, we need an, an, another repo, right? Should we, is that what, or we just need something in the job? I, yeah, that's something we'll have to figure out. I had an, like I had, thought that we needed a separate repo, but I need to still dig into the, all the GitHub uh, notif like all the GitHub settings to see if um, it is like we can render that HTML or not. But for the third one, we definitely need a screenshot feature in, in the perf report creator automation tool that we have. So what I imagining, imagine is that the second one is just for people to look at the data. The third one is to screenshot it and put it in the repository for badges. So the third one will be static. The second one will be dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you get some cycles um, and if you want to take a look at second um, or third, like I imagine that will be the only um, thing that is needed. And I think there is one more. When we have all of this, we will need to put it in a periodic job, but I've not scoped that out yet. We, there is a prerequisite to that, which is this repository needs to be configured with Pro. So I've left okay. that for the future. So let's see. So so let's think about timelines for a second. So the, the V1 release was delayed a week. So it's going to be in July. Um, do we need any QVert, QVert changes out of this? I don't think so, right? I think we're, because it's going to branch and that's going to, I don't, oh, this one, right? Yeah, we need that. Okay, we need this one. This is a QVR. Okay, yeah, we need to get this in ASAP because the branch is like um, next week. So this needs to be done uh, first. Okay, well, it's already approved, but I don't know what's going on with the testing. I need to rebase this. I don't know what is going on here. Okay, I will uh, take a look at the test. Yeah, just. I don't think your code test touching any of these tests. It's oops, I meant to go down. Yeah, I mean it's the ARM test and yeah, this it's not. So uh just rebase and uh I think that'll resolve this and I'll approve this and we'll get this we'll get this in before next week and that should that should give us uh enough time. So then okay, then the rest of this um this leaves us a month. It's actually less than a month because of holidays and stuff. So it's about three weeks. So is this achievable in three weeks? So this would the end result of this would be we have a badge 
and we say and we say like with v1 we we say what would we say it's like well, here's the p 95 p mm -hmm. um, of past eight months so that will be of the past eight months releases. okay yeah okay and that's what we say and maybe we maybe what we do is we just do it as a release note maybe we don't need this stuff like like maybe we prioritize just getting this one and then we put this in a release note so okay then this would need to be um in cuber cuber as a um well, actually, I'm not sure yeah. how we do this. How would we how would we report this? Because like we want to see we need to. Yeah, I'm not sure, actually. This is that is that will be in project infra, right? So it's not being blocked by the timeline of. Cuba right, right. I'm saying, yeah, I agree with you. I'm saying this PR. I Sorry, I had a highlight that was a little misleading. Um, I mean, when we say when we're saying um, when we want to publish that our P95 is whatever for the past eight months. And this is what we're going to publish it as for V1. Uh, how, would, how would we do that, right? Like I, I was saying a release note, but a release note, we would need a pull request to Qvert Qvert. Um, what it could I was also thinking be something is, else, maybe document. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what I was thinking is that it's not it like we can still shoot for getting this before v1 and publish so so two things right if you're not getting the automation done we can just publish the screenshot manually and get it into the badges in in ci performance uh, benchmark repository so there so if let's say automation is taking too much of time then we, I will still manually screenshot it, upload it to the, uh, I mean, git push it, and we can have the batch for that release, and have a future tracking issue to automate it when cutting. Okay, can we can we do that in in, in a week? Is that possible? We need this we, merged right, and we need we need this merged right, and then we need to generate the screen the screenshot. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't have to be following the Qbert feature freeze timeline, right? We, we have until July to do that because the data will not be going anywhere. We just, I just have to modify the plot to, to plot it correctly. No, but uh, the, <clears throat> we, I agree, but the only thing is when it's, we're gonna branch next week. So, I mean, I guess maybe we could say this is a, like, so we'd have to, we have to backport it. It's, this won't have to happen. Backport it as we'd have to backport the you know whatever whatever it is that we're saying, right? That this is the badge. A, yeah, or see, this is where I'm, this is where I'm struggling. It's like it's like the way we communicate this, right? It's the badge is good. The badge is important, right? People show up to the repo. It's in Git. I, I guess that could happen at any time, right? It's not necessarily. Well, it would be nice to be in the V1 branch, but the like, the other part of it is that I'm thinking is like, how do we spread this around beyond just the badge? Is it a release note? Is it a document that we say we publish in the V1 branch, you know, in the Qvert, Qvert docs somewhere and we have a release note that says this is the P95 or, we, or something where we have a release note, something about scale for V1. You know what I mean? Like, how do we yeah. how do we do that beyond just the badge? The badge is important, but also we want to get the message out there into you know all the channels so that this can um, you know be promoted yeah. in other ways. So that's where I think I need a little bit of um, help in understanding the process and the timeline. So let's say okay. we cut a release branch right uh, next week. Uh, that will be Qbert release uh, B1. From there, I, I think the way Qver, Kubernetes does it is, is there that there is an alpha release curve, then there is alpha two. And if the testing on that, those release cuts go well, then eventually that there is a, a release cut. So my question is, from the branches being separated, is there still a process for bringing important 
uh, bug fix slash data back into the release? And if the answer to that is yes, can we take like can we create a placeholder for that data and fill in uh, retro uh, fill fill that in like during the time of release? Um, yeah, maybe I think that would work. So the I guess it would be we create a document and the badge, and then and then we say we're gonna we're gonna come back and fill it in before July, like in two weeks. That's correct. Because okay. ideally, we would also like to have the uh, the data from the release candidates, right? Oh, but you're saying because the branches will cut, it main will no longer track the release code. So the only shot of us getting data is this week before the branches be uh, before the branches get cut. Yeah, there'll be bug fixes, but for the most part, the thing that we'd want to have is for like next week. I like that's kind of it's actually yeah like next week is sort of is going to be our deadline more. For more so for anything that we want to merge into this repo and anything we want to test against like we're, we're test against main we have one more week to do it got it and when we cut release branches do you think we will get the performance jobs for that branch or that will be um gone yeah they should be there still yeah okay. so we could like start a pull open a pull request against uh the, the v1 branch or something and then it should trigger it okay yeah and and so like yeah when they'll if there are any bug fixes they'll they'll get triggered for performance jobs got it so then that's uh that that helps us right so we can scrape the data before the branches get cut so that will be the the baseline for this release. For all the bug fixes, we can make sure that uh, regression, like the, the SIG performance job results is not regressing. And then publish the um, scrape data from this week as uh, B1 benchmarks. Okay, so then, um... Okay, so let's take the data. All right, so how long would that take to get the data and publish it then? We already Any get the, the data. The, okay. So the weekly data dump that, that we merge, right? That is still accurately getting all the data into the CI performance job results. It's just that uh, the, the plotting tool is, um, need some enhancement and i can definitely um, fix that before next week okay so let's do this um i will i had a question for this docs part um shall we bring this up for discussion in the qbird community call um on where exactly would would be a good place to you know share these numbers uh i think i i think people are going to defer to us to be honest i think i think oh. it's going to be yeah i mean i think it's sort of people are going to uh, defer to our opinion i i think this is like so this says like things like usage thing cloud in it conformance debugging right so it can make perfect sense to have performance in here. I think it, I think it's pretty reasonable. Like this is, these are features, freeze, guest FS, local storage, right? I mean, this is, performance would fit perfectly right here. It's just, um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the right place. I think what we gotta figure out is what's gonna go in it. I think it's, you know, we have, I think the badge makes sense. I think um, maybe the chart, a chart or something showing the last eight months and, um, and then a summary and, and that's it. And kind of, I think that would do it. Sure. So for this repository, I'm not sure if badge makes sense, right? So can you go to the CI health uh, repository? Yeah. So 
So yeah, so here, what I was thinking is badge, badge on a separate repository like this makes okay. sense to give a glimpse of how performance results are doing across time, right? So if you want to get, if you want to get a live uh, numbers, okay. you go to the badge. But if you want to get the numbers for an existing cut release or graphs for that, then you go to the, that SIG docs, sorry, the docs uh, folder that, that you were sharing, right? So there will be a snapshot of historic okay, I see. releases data. Okay, I follow you on this. Okay, that makes sense to me. So yeah, this is our snapshot of history and this is our latest. Okay, so no badge in this repo, badge in the CI performance one that we created. Okay, I like that idea. Okay, so yeah, so for this, then okay. we need an issue to uh, like create a pull request, placeholder pull request, um, where, okay, actually, do we need a placeholder or can we just put data? We might not. I think maybe we what we do is data. we you have the data. I think what we do is, and we're right, this is like perfect timing. Like we have, like we're right up, up at the edge of the release. I think what we do is we publish the commit based on the data, I mean, we have a week, I think we just kind of let people know that this needs to merge before V1 and we'll gather the data up until the last moment. And, but let's publish this before, right before V1 and, and this will have the most accurate performance data from the last eight months. Got it, perfect. So then the next thing we need, I, at least I need to get that is what date or what week should I gather the data from? So, so if we say past two releases, that would mean 0 0.59 and 60? No, no, that would be, let's see. So, um, well, this is tricky because of, um, okay, because of the, the release change is gonna overlap here. So the release cadence change. So I think, so this is the monthly. So what does this push it put us at? Zero five nine March. So we're looking at this is three months. So um, up until. So let's. Why don't we just do the last three releases again? But it's not going to be the full, the full amount of time that this would normally take, which would be eight months. It's going to be less. So let's go to zero five eight. Let's check that. It should be February, right? October. Okay. So October was 058. That's eight months, right? Six and uh, yeah. October. That's eight months. Okay. So 058, October 12th, right here. I think that's our answer. That's the, so this is the right cadence then. So the, that's two releases. That makes sense. 059, 058. Okay. So 058 must have been our first release. On the new cadence then? No, yeah. it wasn't. This was 059 once, but it just happened to work. Okay, this happened to line up because we went we went four months or so. No, we only went two. <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused here. One of these is the yeah. is the right one, but we we kind of took a little bit longer, I think, is what happened. And so it stretched out to eight months. Yeah, I mean the timeline doesn't matter, right? So what we are going to say is just that this is past three releases. How we did um, five eight five nine and V one. That's the data, yeah. and the date I will pull the data from is October twelfth. Okay, October twelfth. And so, what did we? So, what are we deciding on? So, P nine five. Um, should we post? So, like, we had some interesting ones, which was like, ah, okay. As I'm thinking, patch and stuff, but people are going to misunderstand that. I think I'm afraid they're going to misunderstand that. Like we don't have enough data on scale to say like patch change is gonna mean this for you. We just we're just gonna show the data and people are gonna see it. I don't know what they're gonna say. Maybe we just P95. And what was the other one? We said P95 and P did we say P50? I think what are the two? Yeah. So I think yeah, that's an interesting question. So another we, we can so two thoughts. One is that yes, P95 and P50 make sense. And a second thought that comes to my mind is when, when KubeWord does uh, a release, does it usually do some kind of blog post or 
uh, call out the main uh, features because I know this that one there should Google, be. I, I think there is, but this one, this one there definitely will be. Um, I don't know where the website is, but let's see. So then, one alternative for uh, doing well, maybe we do one. The, maybe we'll, maybe we should do one. So here we go. So there's exactly. this has the release changes. Okay, maybe we should do one for performance at the very least. If there's not, I, I think there will be one, but if there is not, maybe we should do one for performance or at least contribute to the V1 if there isn't one plan or if there is one plan exactly. to contribute to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is that we can have all the uh, graphs in that uh, document. Um, sorry, what I mean is that we looked at the docs folder, right? We can have more detailed graphs in there, but then supplement that with a blog post that explains some of it, right? Uh, I think that will that will be some more work, but then okay. that will be a good way of communicating. So um, let me see. Let's take a look at this for a second. Um, I'm going to go to your previous ones that are rendered. Um, let me just find one. Here we go. Okay, so just looking at one of these for a second. So, so P95. Uh, I I think we got to do like the, so a mix of so some of the ones we think are most important. So P95, P50. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and ones that look consistent too, like this one's. I, I don't know how to. Something that we can kind of show, like people can read it and and take a glance and be like, okay, I understand. Okay, there was a change here. Uh, and maybe some ones that are constant, like so P95, P50, maybe some no, which is zero. Um, I want to say, where's the I think okay, it will be more helpful to decide on that next week, right? Okay, because well, we have, what I'm thinking that. is that. Um, next week we will have more accurate data of what changed yeah so we can decide that uh once everything is in a single pot like okay. which ones to pick yeah here's a good one so patch counts for vmi this is like this is the one we want to see this is a great for this is made tailor made for a blog post right here yes <laughs> okay yeah all right let, that's fine let's do that we'll decide next week all right, so so in terms of priorities, let's do so we gotta get we gotta get this qvert qvert change in um hold on, I need it, I need it get centered here. Let's where's our where is a qvert qvert change? This one. Okay, we need to get this merged. So you gotta rebase this. Uh and then um why don't you open up the change for the docs? Um we can just stub it out and 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 like if you don't if we don't have data for it, just right if you want to wait for the data and we'll just let um let's tag Fabi and David and others just let them know our intention. And then um we need to talk to Daniel and about getting this. I think this is just a we need a minor change to get this all in. Um all right, a bunch of things. <laughs> and then this is the other one. Okay, this is the fourth one, which is we need this to get all the data. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I will take um, I will take three action items. This um, creating a placeholder PR for data to be filled in next week and rebasing this. Um, yeah. Okay. This one. All right. Let me talk to Daniel then. I don't know what needs to be changed here. Though. <laughs> I have not. I don't know what the command is, but um, maybe you can tell me, and I can I can push this through. Uh. So for this one. Uh, so two things we need to make sure is that is the script present in that? So can you open the files? Yeah. Should we just table this one then? If we don't, if in terms of we can wait a week, right? Like this is just going to be, we can just wait a week because this is this come after the V1 stuff. We don't need this right now. Uh, yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Let's just wait a week. We'll we'll do this. We can do this when when we're a little farther along with the V1 stuff. We'll just we'll not. We'll hold on to this. Yeah. Okay. So three action items you got the rebase this, the open the docs uh, stub, and then this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that will place us nicely for V1. 
and then next right. week we can decide on what things can go for for that release okay um sounds good all right i do want to review we got 12 minutes um i wanted to look at this i made a bunch of changes to this uh so very quickly um so i've written a, a few i've kind of formalized this a little bit more i have not completed my research and or said it it's really in a design document state but um i think it's better communicates what's going on here so kind of the tldr is um uh, so I read a little summary about this and, and about our thesis and, and how we want to record timestamps. Uh, and then it goes into requirements. Basically, this is what we want. We want a granular per object metric in Prometheus. And then we also want a granular per object metric uh, on the object. I have this as P1. I just think if it's P0, it's going to distract people. So we will leave this as, I think it's fine to leave this as P1. Um, <clears throat> and so use cases for this is just we want to isolate bottlenecks and we want to see our end-to-end -end creation. That's pretty straightforward. So high level, um, so kind of the way approach I'm taking with this is uh, Qbert, the reason this approach makes a lot of sense for Qbert is because um, like we have an API server, we have controllers and we have an API that we serve, but it's sort of, it's, you know, we call, even call Qbert a cluster add-on, excuse me, a cluster add-on, but it's sort of more than that. It's, it's really, Qbert is no different than any CRD, right? It's just a controller, right? And we're using the Kubernetes API server. Every CRD, every API, technically, you can look at it as just a, a sort of a guest API that's in the cluster, serving whatever requests from the user. And so the thesis is that really Kubernetes perspectives on this is, is should be no different than really any API's perspective. And that any API wants to be efficient it wants to understand its effect on the Kubernetes API server. It wants to understand on the effect on the total scalability and performance in the cluster. And so having this sort of granularity when looking at how it is being used, so the different phases it goes through, how quickly it goes through them, and um, its overall effect will be important for actually viewing and discovering issues. And so that's the general idea that I'm proposing here is that this is the idea of a phase transition timestamp is something that can be used anywhere for any CRD, any project that wants to use the Kubernetes API server in, in addition to the core APIs. And, and so that would be helpful for viewing these general, these granular or granular look at phases. And I am being very specific with phases. And I know that people don't like phases maybe in Kubernetes or they're looking to go away from it. And that's fine. Like, I, I think it's just the way it is now. So I think communicating that way would make the most sense when, when talking about it. And, Maybe it changes in the future, and that's fine. This can adapt in any way that it changes. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much the perspective that I changed. It is that it's um, we're, we're sort of talking about this from uh, we're looking at this from just a slightly different perspective. So, anyway, I don't know what you think, Leia. Yeah, um, I I think the gist of how this helps make sense so we can you know rely on the community to give us feedback makes sense uh, the only thing i had a question on is if you can go up um, at the yeah so here right i think it would be good to have a discussion on what kind of benefits does a, a power object metric um, have? Because at the end of the day, we will be able, we will be aggregating those when dealing with thousands of objects, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe at Prometheus level, our object doesn't make uh, a lot of sense. Um, as long as each object is contributing to uh, aggregation. So you're saying we need some more use cases, I, I think is what I'm hearing. So I've got a few in here, but maybe we need some more. So I like, I have, I want to isolate bottlenecks, but maybe no, another no, one is I want to aggregate. No, yeah. what I'm suggesting is that, let's say for those use case, right? If you want to um, isolate a bottleneck in, let's say, for uh, creation time, so if you 
if you have all the tools in the world, right? Like how would you go about it? So you would look at the pod data. Um, in inside of the pod data, what exactly is taking more time? So you'd look, um, let's say at PVC or network data, right? But that's not the starting point of your uh, debugging story. The starting point is an aggregation, right? Are all my pods seeing this or a subset of pods uh, are seeing this performance difference? So what I'm trying to say is these use cases are great, but the, does that need a per object granularity or does it need aggregation where each, each object contributes to that uh, aggregation? You see, so I think what you're saying is that um, this is the uh, the granularity allows us to expose the use cases where, for example, I could isolate uh, the problem to one piece of hardware in my entire cluster, whereas the, this would not be captured if we just did aggregation. Uh, well, I'm I'm saying the the other way around. Uh, it's good to look at. Um, aggregation where each object contributes things. So for example, in, in Prometheus, right? Let's say you have data for um, each pod in Prometheus. That would be too much data going into Prometheus, right? Versus if you had end-to-end -end, uh, creation to um, running for, as actually, those already exist though. Those are like, I mean, those were the, like all of those end-to-end -end scheduling stuff, like the aggregates exist. These yeah, that exists, but, but what does not exist is breaking down that aggregate and what is contributing to uh, regression in that, right? Right. So as so, we were saying, like we, you, the value is that you want to take the way we're going to use these is we're going to aggregate them and then to find patterns and then we're going to break them down to isolate bottlenecks. Correct. Yes. What I'm saying is that from a larger aggregate, we need it to have enough data that we can isolate problems in a class of objects, right? So let's say for using PVC of type A is causing problems in the cluster. Okay. So as a user, I want, yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm just gonna keep typing while you're talking. Yeah. And from that aggregation, then we can chase uh, the, the performance problem of, of single pod or something. So single pod data comes next. I think from an aggregation point of view, we need more uh, insights into what regresses that uh, aggregate. One, two, break, and wait. So find, um, class of performance problem, yeah, patterns of performance. Something like that, and then, um, I can do this one uh, as user. I want to identify if a piece, uh, a, let's say, how about this, a faulty piece of hardware is skewing my something like that. That's another one. I mean, you can go on forever like this. I mean, this is this illustrates the point, right? Yeah, and so I think a, a concrete example of this would be right that, as you said, the aggregation of the creation to running at kubelet level is present. But if that goes bad, let's say kubelet regresses in, in that um, creation to running time. Is there data to point at PVC or network 
or or any of the other sub tasks that kubelet performs now that doesn't have to be a per object statistics as long as um, we can at least pinpoint uh, a pattern and then we can chase uh, a per object okay um I just want to say for here, I want to. Uh, okay, I'll think about that. So here's here's what I'm thinking because we're only have two minutes left. So th this is good. Um, I think um, I, I've not gone into like the technicals of like volumes and how we can accomplish this. And I don't even know if I want to just yet because I mean, we only have 30 minutes when talking with the, the SIG Kubernetes group anyway. So I don't think we're going to have a chance to. But um, basically, what I want to do is to. Um, just review this stuff and take questions. I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then um, I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna, we'll take this up in a future in a future one and I'll just leave the existing metrics in place. I think that illustrates the point. This is gonna be our requirements document and we'll see what we get. I think that's, yeah, I think it'll be useful. I, so I can't, I can't add a suggestion in the document. For some reason, I still can't do it. So I either, maybe you can help me do it or I, I can ask uh, we'll check and you can, I don't know, we can do another, or he can mm. put a stamp out of place for us in the document or something. I can put something, uh, if you want, uh, I can you just share the link of this document yeah. or? Yeah, I'll send it, oh, it's in the it's in the notes. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll get yeah, it. Yeah, right here. Yeah, just add um, it in there and I'll say like, I'll do the requirements. Let me move this out. Uh, I'm gonna take the volume stuff and let me pull this out. Um, I'm gonna just put this somewhere else and we're gonna leave it. There we go. We will come back to that. Yeah. Oops, I just need to get, get the title out too. Uh, so do yeah, you then want go ahead to... and yeah, go ahead and share it in there, and we'll um, we'll take some time on that. If you want to, yeah, add us as a suggestion, and you can say that I'll that we'll talk about it. Yeah, do you uh, do you want me to phrase this as uh, enhancements to performance metrics or, or something sure. like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, just we can say like um, you can. I, I think they kind of know us as like the Kubert six scale group. You say Kubert six scale um, performance metrics um enhancement sure something like yeah. that <laughs> sounds good i think we'll know what, what we're talking about okay awesome yeah i'll put that there okay sounds good all right and will you be able to make the meeting this afternoon yeah cool okay we'll see you there then okay sounds good all right, I think all right we're at time. thanks thanks Elaine. all right we'll talk later bye-bye bye-bye